September the 23rd marked 54 years since the death of the man who more than anyone else experienced the great mystery of pain, Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, Saint Pio. Known as an exceptional confessor, Padre Pio has made a deep mark on the history of the church. Going to Padre Pio for confession was worse than taking a high school graduation exam. We knew that Padre Pio read our innermost selves, that he knew everything we had done, that he knew all our misbehavior. So we would always approach confession with a little trepidation because Padre Pio spoke his mind. He would throw people out of the confessional without any problem. But in confession, Padre Pio was perfect. When you went to confession, he wanted you to make a holy confession. Then he would lean his head close to the door of the confessional and ask you what you wanted. Francesco Forgione, the baptismal name of the future Padre Pio, was born on May the 25th, 1887, in Pietrelcina, in a small province in southern Italy. His parents, Grazio Forgione and Maria Giuseppa De Nunzio, were small landowners. At the tender age of 10, Francesco expressed the desire to become a monk. His father, Grazio, in order to allow him to follow his vocation and study, had to emigrate to the United States. On January the 6th, 1903, at the age of 16, Francesco finally entered the novitiate of the Capuchin Friars, taking the name Brother Pio. After six years of studies, he was ordained a priest. But it was on September the 20th, 1918, that his life changed forever. On that day in San Giovanni Rotondo, where he'd been living for some time, he received the gift of the stigmata on his hands, side, and feet. The mystery of Padre Pio attracted the attention of public opinion, which was often shrouded in slander and controversy. For this reason, the Holy See decided to issue a restrictive measure against him, which led Padre Pio to a strict enclosure for two years. A period during which he was forbidden to hear confessions, celebrate mass in public, and maintain any correspondence with the faithful. Maria Teresa also recalls Padre Pio's hard struggle against the temptations of the evil one. He was tormented by the devil. While you were confessing, he was never still. He was moving all the time. I understood later. I don't know what horrible things the devil was saying to him. Padre Pio was constantly banging his head against the confessional wall as if he wanted to send away a bad thought like swatting a fly. He was continuously tortured. Despite the controversy, curiosity, and debates, Padre Pio's life over the next 50 years remained the same, a life of intense and exhausting prayer. To embrace the guidance of a saint, to be followed by him, his spiritual assistance, I cannot explain with words everything that Padre Pio gave to my husband and to me. He has given us so much. Padre Pio died on September the 23rd, 1968, and was canonized in St. Peter's Square by Pope St. John Paul II in June of 2002. Every year, millions of pilgrims come to San Giovanni Rotondo to pay homage and ask for the intercession of Padre Pio, the humble friar who lived the spirituality of the cross on his body. <laughs>